what's going on everybody welcome to on screen live my name is andrew jubin and this is the show for the 26th of february 2024 this is the last week of february ready to kick its ass out of here you know what i'm saying happy dune two week to everybody who celebrates got my um children of dune which has nothing to do with dune part two um but a good book so far. Uh, gonna bring in my buds. We got a lot to get, a lot to get to today. A lot, a lot, a lot to get to today. First up, Eric Siska. I had no idea. I completely forgot it was Dunt Week. Dunt. Yeah, Dunt that's it you, up. Dude. I'm pronouncing the two. <laughs> Dunt two. Like it's two T's. Yeah, I don't know. Be like I'm working Dunet. on it. <laughs> Dunet. That's Dunet. good. That's good. Uh, we're the Flannel Brothers today, dude. How about that's, that? That's right. Uh, all right. Let's see. Is he wearing flannel? I forgot to look. Steven Sadak. That's more of a denim sitch. If you're looking. Oh, I, well, am, I, am, am I a jaywalking right now? <laughs> I like oh, a denim the shirt. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I am devastated because I have to mm. miss Dune this weekend because I'm going to a bachelor party in Las Vegas. So I'm mm. going to be on uh, next Monday. You guys are going to be all like doing this and doing that. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna have to wait another. You'll week. be looking at different worms. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I mean, it's the desert. You're in the sure. desert, dude. That's true. Honestly, that man, true. find get out in like a morning or something. Sneak out. Sneak across the dunes. The oh, Vegas no. dunes. I go mean, see like, the movie? there's a lot of things I could do in Las Vegas that'll get me divorced. But I think seeing Dune without my wife might be the, the first. <laughs> That's the the number one with a bullet. Well, uh, ah, see, see, the trick is, dude. You yeah. find yourself a wife who don't give a fuck about Dune. <laughs> no, that's not fun at all. <laughs> well, you go whenever you want. <laughs> good news for you in that desert, Steve. We know you can't walk with rhythm anyway. Let's just out. <laughs> that's true, man. They, they would never find Steve out there. You're shy halud proof, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of someone who's shy halud proof, Chris Cabin. Famous 1980s movie quote that does. Oh, now it's just not even <laughs> literature. What are we doing? You don't know Jack at this point. So, what's, what's happening? So, what, what, wait, what? You do a crossword right now? Crossword. Right? Crossword. Like, you, you don't know read... Jack? What, 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 why, how dare you? You're going to be reading a <laughs> crossword, Foster. You son of a bitch. You Sudoku next week? What is it called? So What's that thing called? Sudoku. Sudoku. You'll be reading just... Sudoku next week? You, you didn't get it right again, but that's okay. <laughs> so, dude. <laughs> No, uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, what's going on, folks, in the chat? Uh, Kevin Lynch. I'm so Rachel. Gary Miles. Hello. Knowledge Junkie. Like that. Nico hey. Fish. Brendan. Hell yeah. Hello, Jonathan everybody. Kidney Stone Siegel. That's pretty funny. I Good. saw some people in the chat earlier debating where we pronounce, because we pronounce daughter as dirter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. shit. Sure. It's sure. not from anything you're thinking of. It's from a casino commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that ran, yeah, that ran in New Jersey and New York vaguely two you, summers ago. Maybe I'll try to find it. We could do a, a half second clip on next oh, week's. So oh, on dude, week. yeah, I will proudly but, run those fucking scumbag commercials on here. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> My dad gets to play in his pajamas at home. <laughs> <laughs> they got a free buffet. You just yeah. go out there and it's free hamburger buns. Yeah, he used to have to wear a sports coat to go to the casino, but now he can do it at home. It's yeah. all you can eat shrimp, but in your Zunders wears. <laughs> and you know, honestly, it's better than the femme toms that he was into for a while. <laughs> at least this time he can win. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we got a lot to get to today. We're going to be reviewing uh, Driveway Dolls, looking at this Borderlands trailer. I'm excited for this, yo. We're talking to Brandon Streisning. This dude, good dude, good film writer. This motherfucker co-created the Vulture Stunt Awards, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking to him about that a little later on in the program. Uh, but first up, we got some birthdays here. And I like to, I'm going to start doing this once a week, celebrating a dead person. Okay. Uh, so today, Jackie Gleason would have been 108 years old, but there not, no but way. not. What if he had, would he had that mustache still? I, Probably. I, I, well, I'll tell you, there was something the I saw. It must've been cause his birthday was, you know, today and whatever. There was something going around Instagram, like one of those, like, you know, classic Hollywood photos accounts or whatever. And mm. it's a picture of Jackie Gleason and Marilyn Monroe. 
Wow. And I was stunned to read the caption that said, uh, Jackie Gleason and Marilyn Monroe celebrating at Jackie Gleason's 34th birthday party. Dude, he almost just looked like this. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Nice. I was like, 34? Please have a glass of water. No, no, you can't just be happening. drinking ribs all day. No, gin and Barbecue ribs. Grid. That's your that's your diet. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, oh, where the fuck this fucking happened again? I got to tell you, sometimes... Mm -hmm. Uh, the system here pisses me uh, off. Uh -huh. I forget the photo, but I want to get the photo up for this one. He's the sweatiest man in Predator, Bill Duke. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Great oh, director. Really. Deep cover. Great oh, movie. Hell yeah. Deep cover. Yeah. Great movie. Um, another great uh, action legend, of course. Mark Dacascos turns 60. Uh, Blues Brothers 2000's Erica Badu turns 50. Oh, no, come no. on. Come no. On. Musician. Amazing musician. <laughs> but look. The four of us weren't in Blues Brothers 2000, all right? True. Somebody's got to take the credit. Oh, I, I, you I'm could jealous. say also what women want co-star, but that's no better, really, at all. Uh, oh, oh right. in what women I'll tell you who I want what men Blues want, Brothers I 2000. That. I want that Erica Badu. Yang, yang, yang. <laughs> Get me Erica Badu. <laughs> uh, uh, he's the a James Badu Brothers. Prince 47. Uh, oh, there James goes. Wan, Love 47. James Great. Wayne. Congratulations yeah. on living and Jackie Gleason, congratulations <laughs> on dying. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, we got a lot to get to today. Uh, also, yeah, some shit, some interesting shit at the box office. Let's uh, take a look. This is Highest Gross. <laughs> I got to tell you something. It's a sad day. Oh, no. Sad Monday, you guys. You know why? Why? After 10 weeks at the box office, Wonka out of the top five. <gasps> yeah. Wow. Finally I, happened. I thought I'd never see the day. I thought I'd be taking no. my grandkids to that movie. <laughs> <laughs> when they remaster it in uh, 8K, then, you yeah. can, uh, then you'll be able to see it. <laughs> Which one's Wonka? He's the one at the top bet. Wonka's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, here we go. So number five, no surprises. Migration mm. still rocking and rolling. Now this is in week 10. You're doing it. With the five million bucks. You migrating, dude? I'm migrating, man. Nice. <laughs> Looks yeah. like a sad version of the chicken dance, dude. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're not as lively as chickens, the ducks. Uh, but here we go. This is funny. At four, Madam Web. Wow. Ooh, oh, that boy. is a drop. Six oh, million buckaroos. It drops sixty-one percent. This is on an, an estimated one hundred and ten million dollar budget. You're fine. Oh, kind of curious because when i went to the alamo i don't know if i said this last week uh -huh. there was a, a decent amount of people there but it was an ironic so like immediately everyone was in oh, on making yeah. fun of it so i was kind of curious if that was gonna like maybe well, carry uh, through I some juice yeah yeah i mean that's probably three of the six million is yeah. that I would yeah. Guess. yeah just joke screenings yeah. opening weekend my theater 2 p.m sunday i was the only person there wow Whoa, that's completely empty that's yeah. pretty bad um but she uh, Actually, couldn't see this coming with her powers, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, th I, I think I really did. It's all for the conversation now. Like, it, it's mm. you're not seeing it, going to see it to be like, oh, I'm going to be taken away into this wonderful world. It's so right. that you can make the jokes with everybody and get the memes and all that shit. Well, luckily for Sony, that uh, anyone but you top 200 million at the box office this weekend. So, oh boy, makes up for the huge fucking crater in their wallet that is Madam Web. Now, here we go. Uh, that second round of chosen episodes may have not done anything, but the power of the Lord oh, thank and God. his fucking stranglehold on the box office is still real with something uh, that was called Ordinary Angels with Hillary Swank. We this are is out from Lionsgate, six point five million. This is the Ooh. same studio that did that Jesus Revolution yeah. movie. Oh uh, my Jack God. Reacher is a dad with like a sick kid or something. Oh, yeah. so he takes over a hospital with a gun. Oh, that was John Q. And That's John Q. That, that, it's a different Sorry. movie. <laughs> no <laughs> guns in this movie, Chris. Cavan? A couple of decades ago, also. It's but interesting anyway. that Hillary Swank is now making movies for the people that would have uh, assaulted Brandon Tina. That's that's it's great for her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> to go to the other side oh, of the aisle. Yes. Oh, I saw. TV spot for this, and it does look like one of those movies that it's like, listen, my kid can see God and heaven and the future, and he needs your help. 
I mean, if Jack Reacher is going to continue to suck, I kind of see why he's going this way. Sure. I, if, mm-hmm. if, if, so if you've if been really let down by the second season of that show, Chris? I, 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 he, I, I like Reacher as Reacher. I don't want him as part of the Avengers. I don't need that. I, I agree with Chris. I mean, I still, it's still watchable. It's still fun enough. You got Robert Patrick farting around, but the move would the be first if one was better. If you're going to do an Avengers with Jack Reacher. You need like a really morbidly obese fat guy. You want a really mm-hmm. short guy. Yeah. You want like a skinny. You know, you get Doug Jones, no, no makeup. Like, not, he's like the nope. skinny. Guy. Then you've got all these body types. Yeah. And now I'm watching it. I now I'm watching. Short guy. There's definitely yeah. a short guy there who has a family, but he um, does almost nothing. It's just not. But I, like I said, I think if he was also like what he's in the new uh, uh, guy Richie. Like if he's just going to be an action guy, I see why he's going to start doing stuff like this. Sure, you got to sure. fill out the resume a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but you say, well, what do you mean by Avengers? It's not he's not teaming up with other established well, properties, right? One it's just of them, getting buddies. Each, each <laughs> one of them has like a specific a uh, power Set of skills, like a exactly. skill, okay. like that okay. do. Cri- uh, okay, listen. Imagine like Taken with Liam Neeson, and then it's like, oh, now it's a, it's Taken too, and I'm meeting all the other Liam Neesons that have the exact same oh. government training and. Yeah, so it's uh, like him with no a thanks. it's a him with a giant team, and I think that is a letdown. And the team right. isn't like they don't introduce the team in an interesting way, where like each mm. one of them has their particular like thing. Like none of them are as charismatic as he is, uh, even close. Yeah, so sure. it's kind of like all right, he just has people around now. Fine. I like the different body type idea that Steve had. That yeah. like you get a big guy and then Jack Reacher can like roll him down a hill at someone. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> like, now we're thinking. Yeah, exactly. It's like when Colossus throws Wolverine at something, you know, yeah. like those kind of fun team ups. Um in at number two, uh again, not the chosen, but a different television thing that was tossed on screens, I believe, just for a weekend. Uh, real mouthful of a title here: Demon Slayer colon uh, you know Naiba to the Shira training. Yes. Oh my God! That you know the name of this I, movie? Or it probably you, smelled in auditoriums across the country. Oh movie. no! Right. It, you think it, the Madam Web crowd smells fantastic? <laughs> there was no one there. <laughs> well, I was vaping in the theater. Sure. Uh, I mean, yeah, no, this is out from Crunchyroll, 11.6 mil, an R-rated uh, anime adventure yeah. here, so hopefully it was violent. It's very blood. I-, I watched the first season of this. Uh, okay. This is a TV show that's in was, the theater? And they also, well, they do like two episode arcs are in the theater as a movie. So okay. like you get uh-huh. uh, four, two 45 minute uh, episodes essentially put together is, uh, this is the second or third time they've done, I think third time they've done this. Uh-huh. Um I think the first one like Mugen Train, and then they had a, uh, the the Sword Village a, couple, a year or two ago. Uh, uh-huh. But it's been I, I dropped it after the first. It's a very rudimentary like uh, anime. It's like a a, br- a a a guy who's really good at swords and like magic <laughs> abilities. They're all uh, like that. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, it's like very like the same thing you always imagine. His well, sister has uh, has been overtaken by an evil thing, but she can control it. He gets oh, a yeah. team together. They fight against evil. Uh, it's a fine enough show. It's not the one I'd necessarily be like, hey, go watch this right now. now did you like that team? That or team did... was good. That okay. was a good team. Okay, there you go. team I got to say. Now, let me ask you this, though. Distinct, let me ask you this. Personalities. Are you watching uh Japanese language track or are you watching the dub? I mean, a, a Japanese track every time. Yeah, because I wonder uh, if you're watching the dub, if there was anybody that had Steve's uh, favorite thing. Hey! Hey there! <laughs> hey, you! <laughs> they do the general. That. Get that demon slayer out of here! I don't need that demon slayer. Get him out of here! They oh my a... god! <laughs> you gotta they get have several out. characters like that. Several mm-hmm. characters. Yeah, like uh-huh. that. They're not generals. They're like uh, <laughs> uh, big muscle bound, like super warriors. But like, yes. Uh-huh. Similar uh huh. Similar. Fair. You know. Fair enough. Hey, bring those kids out to the box office. That's fine. Uh, the stats on that were it was uh, unsurprisingly a male dominated. Uh, uh, Wait, uh, what? There. Yeah, I know. Can you believe it? Mm. Uh, and then still sitting comfortably at number one, uh, oh. Bob Marley, One oh, Love man. in week two, $13.5 million. Uh, Chris Cabin, you got a little uh, capsule uh, review of this guy? It's very boring. Oh, good. Uh, that's, 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 that's the high. That, that's really, I mean, uh-huh. it, it, I, I give it credit for trying to pick one part of his life rather than go the full, mm. like you get flashbacks back to trench town when he moved there, when he was a teenager, when he started working with, uh, 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 uh Joe Higgs and, um, 
uh, Bunny Whaler and all them. Uh, mm -hmm. But you, most of it is about when he got shot and the aftermath of that with the concert. Uh, mm -hmm. And like, that's a cool idea, like to focus it all and try to give a sense of his life in this one moment. But like, it's very boringly done. Yeah. It's kind of mm -hmm. by the numbers. Everything is, it's not as, again, like, it's certainly better than something like Bohemian Rhapsody where they tried to shove it all in there and it right. just kind of but drains ask, it all of any personality. Let me ask you, Chris, a lot of music at least? There is a good amount of music. Not as much as you would, again, like not damn. as much as you would expect. Like, Is the, uh, is the actor singing or is it Marley Dub? It sounds like a dub. Yeah, uh, that's from, a hard one to do. To get yeah, it. I'd I'd prefer yeah. the dub in that case. Yes. Yeah, no kidding. He tries to do his dancing, and that's not great either. Well, um, he should be able to mimic him perfectly because he's a scroll. So that would make you know all the sense <laughs> of the world uh -huh. that he could just mimic him absolutely perfectly. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's the guy from Barbie and um yeah. uh one uh. Four nights, one night in Miami. Yeah, yeah. Kingsley Benadir. Yes, that's that guy. Yes, yeah. that guy. Yeah, yeah, he's he's in that Secret Invasion. Yeah. That's what Steve's referencing. Oh, he, he one is. Of, I, one I of the seen it. absolute worst fucking Marvel things ever. You want to talk mm. about boring? Oh, oh, let's have a nap contest. <laughs> Who fucking yeah. falls asleep first? That show was terrible. And this reminds me, uh, not really interesting to cover on like trailer segments. So I don't think we're gonna bother, but. Uh, when I was seeing uh, Driveway Dolls this weekend, um, there was a trailer for this Amy Winehouse movie. Oh, man. Oh, 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 oh. I'm glad we didn't cover it. I'm really happy we Ooh, didn't cover it. Ooh, does it look like Ooh. dog shit. Like <laughs> lifetime television yeah. made for TV <laughs> bullshit movie. Could not believe it. Could not believe it. The, the, the uh, doc awful. did all you need to, if you want to see some, the uh, Asif Kapadia uh, yep. documentary is very good. Go just see yep. that. It's really great. And you can watch her incredibly sad story that yeah, exactly. way yeah, and go. fucking Incredible. move yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, but real quick, speaking of drive away dolls, uh, we'll do a little elsewhere at the box office because uh, of the Patreon poll. Normally I wouldn't do this. This only charted up to eight here with a paltry $2.4 million. Yeah. Another massive uh, failure, one right after another from Focus Features. But our patrons uh, doing the voting got it in just barely 52% saying it would be still pretty okay to land two to 3.5 million, 2.4, just barely. Uh, it's, not, it's a not great showing, and they paid... 20 million dollars to acquire this movie so it's weird i mean they didn't advertise it terribly well i don't i, I wasn't super aware that it was out this weekend you well know? a lot of yeah. people were, were saying that and i think it's kind of funny because it was supposed to be out you know last september so yes. like july august when you were at the movies you yes. were seeing the preview for the movie and then with the strikes it got bumped back to to now and i kind of think just the buys were way less like i did see a couple of times in theater trailers after that like mm. in the run-up to this actual release i didn't really see anything on television like i i, I don't want to say they straight out dumped it because that's they yeah. did not do that but like i think the move really affected it and if you're someone like um oh lord who is whoever has uh challengers is that the name of the new uh zendaya yes. uh luca yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. that's another one that was moved from the fall yep you need to fucking get on the bullhorn this movie still exists it's yes. back go mm -hmm. watch that three-way in theaters yes, you know what i mean you, you have to do that otherwise i'm thinking it's about the goddamn uh space shuttle explosion <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh -huh. no you can watch there's some netflix thing that i saw i didn't watch it but i swiftly passed by it that's like the challenger the final mission and i was like why why on <laughs> earth would you want to watch that you tell me about the first one. tell me about the first one okay you know yeah, yeah. what well, <laughs> about better times good one. yeah, yeah exactly. think about the good times exactly uh so yeah that's what's going on at the box office kind of kind of a not great week but you know we'll see what happens june 2 coming out uh, going to be a oh, big boy. week and also as far as family stuff i think it's like 2 weeks till um Kung Fu Panda Four. Yeah. Uh, so finally, finally, yeah. migration might leave the top ten. Finally. It, yeah, it just finally. might. Prediction: uh, and, Kung, Kung Fu Panda yeah. Four in the top ten box office for the rest of the year. Wow. <laughs> <Think so? laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. We'll. I see would take that bet. Um. All right. So yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see what's going on. Uh. But yeah. Speaking of uh, coming attractions, got to keep your eyes peeled. Got to keep your eyes glued to those release dates. 
stuff moving around here. Uh, but something we're going to talk about right now, uh, the new one from Eli Roth. I think it looks kind of fun. We'll see in a segment we like to call trailer segment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is the new one from Eli Roth, y'all. It is the adaptation of a video game I know nothing about, Borderlands. Uh, anybody playing Borderlands? You playing Borderlands, Chris Cabin? I have not played any Borderlands. I hear it's fun, though. Mm -hmm. I hear it's uh, a yeah. lot of fun. I never heard of it, uh, but here we are. A lot of you know, You're shooting people. I'm sure if I played Borderlands, I'd get shot immediately and be called God knows what. Uh, like, yeah, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> Slur McSlur face. That's what you'd uh, exactly. be called, dude. <laughs> uh, people in the chat, you watching this? Uh, are you playing this Borderlands? You know what this music's all about, or what? Is uh, this, uh, I couldn't tell from the trailer, which I did watch. Is it aliens or is it post apocalyptic or what are we doing? A little from Calm A, a little from Calm B. It's Got me. it. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say maybe it's a, a bit of both there. Um, it kind of looks like it, it could be that way. And everything. It looks like a, 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 a good trough. Like you throw everything yeah. in there and you just go hog wild. Yeah. Uh, so here we go, folks uh, watching along at home. If you are uh, inclined to do so uh, in the episode description, we have the link to this Borderlands trailer. This is out wide August 9th here from Lionsgate. I mean, I got to say, if if this is a success, Lionsgate's got kind of another, you know, big notable uh, franchise on its hands here so i guess we'll see but this is the uh, the trailer lionsgate movies uh youtube channel official trailer so you know it's going to be the real deal and that means chris cabin mm -hmm. it's coming with a trailer before the trailer love it so get ready get ready uh so here we go uh queued up here the borderlands trailer is going to start in three two one go you know it is ow, ow. it's shocking that this is eli roth it really we're just doing James Gunn, right? Yes. yes. I mean, yeah. this is yeah. very Guardians. Oh, yeah. Like, like lost to town. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jack Black voicing a robot. All right. Sure. Kate Blanchett kind of having the Cherry 2000 hair here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Good call. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's space. We got so okay, that's that's to be aliens. Yeah. yeah. This is a they show you too much. Oh, Mystery Mobile. Look at well, that. they show you a ton. You know, I like that Jamie Lee Curtis can do a silly thing like this. Sure. Maybe yeah, she got an Oscar for this, too. Just keep giving it to her. I don't care. <laughs> wow. Steve Sadek, still burned by everything everywhere all at once. Last I, year. I love that movie. I think she doesn't deserve an Oscar for it. It's fine. <laughs> See, the thing I'm looking at here is it's fun. Yeah. But you got Kevin Hart. Yeah. I just I don't know what my tolerance level for Kevin Hart is you know, these days. I agree with that, but at the same time, I think this he looks the best here than he's has. Yes, I agree. That's, that's true. Yeah. Who's this big muscle bound fucker with the mask on? No idea. No. I guess my question would be: Do we know if this is rated yet? Uh, that's a great question. This is an is R, R with like fun Eli Roth gore. I would bet PG thirteen. Then let then it's something worth watching, kind of. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about like killing people and body yeah. parts and whatever. I would hope it's you know, bloody. I need a little blood here. Yeah. Why is the one girl doing like a Louise Belcher rabbit ears thing? Great right question. It's character. I don't know. It's doing it for somebody. That's why. Claptrap. I don't know who Ariana Greenblatt is. She, at the very least, I was looking her up. She was in, uh, she's a kid actress that's kind of coming up. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of cool looking guns. Yeah. I mean, it is it is James Gunn. Well, especially with the music. Is that Edgar Ramirez as the villain, maybe? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. He's, they, there's okay. a couple shots of him. See, now this is where it's too much. Do not show people this. Do not yeah. show people this moment of your movie. Yeah. Right. No, don't. There's cool. the ending. Yeah, we'll all exactly. see this 40 times before August, and when yeah. it happens in theaters, no one will give a fuck. And yeah, it is just so James Gunny, and the, you got to take out the music at least. You or need to, or at yes. least up in a, like, do grunge or something. You yes, know what I mean? You change can't, it up. Well, this tune is the that. one that they use in like every trailer for an Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, I you know I don't know. I mean, uh, I mean another director was borrowing heavily from people uh, last year with a with a certain movie that came out. So if this is borrowing from elsewhere as well, but maybe it's better. Than Are we not allowed to Rebel say Moon? what you're? I'm, I'm Rebel. saying Rebel Moon. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, <laughs> all right, <laughs> that's fair. Uh, I mean, like I'm right now. I like Eli Roth as a director because Thanksgiving was really hey. Yeah, exactly. a lot of goodwill on Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Uh, Thanksgiving, though, that did regenerate as an actual genre guy that uh -huh. re-energized my like for him for a little bit here. It seems yeah. like he's trying to make movies that people like for the first time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And like and that's the thing is that he always had that style uh, with him, but he just didn't. It was always under all this torture stuff. Uh -huh. Like there's elements of hostile uh that like are interesting it's just that he's so obsessed with the torture of it that all the interesting stuff goes away but like if he's just going to use that uh, those like stylistic ideas he has for something like this mm -hmm. i'm kind of into it and that's what thanksgiving felt like yeah. was him being like i'm just going to be a director and give this some flavor some, something that would otherwise be kind of trash uh like straight to streaming on shutter like this is actually gonna have some flavor to it and sure. it, it does it does it, to this day it does yeah um well so we shall see um but uh but by the time uh this comes out in august of course we'll have already been uh, on our little trip through the south we're going on tour uh oh, yeah. starting in april guys can you believe that shit i no. know that's very soon oh my god uh -huh. i gotta get my shoes on <laughs> uh first up the 424 five is it yes oh, yeah, we are in atlanta georgia we're going to the city winery there classy joint y'all uh talking gamer the gerard butler uh action movie and you know our show might not be appropriate for you to bring a nice day to but the venue is if you yeah. want to risk yes. it it's, it's yep, got okay. a good menu good good libations i i oh, don't i don't see this one getting too disgusting although who knows you want to we're dealing, we're dealing with uh, with our guy so who knows yeah uh, i'll like, make sure it's disgusting. not a lot of not a lot of sex stuff in the gamer universe as there, i remember it there will be sex stuff I, I sure. yeah, <laughs> by the way look at look at Chris Kevin, look what you're doing this fucking challenge accepted shit yeah. that just yeah. happened the right fucking here fucking challengers right yeah, here yeah, yeah, they, uh, oh, maybe God. that was my idea <laughs> uh, and then in May, we got two spots in the Lone Star State. We're hitting up uh, Space City. Yeah. Uh, 514, we're talking RoboCop 2. Now, this is at the Houston Improv, uh, which, you know, we like playing the improv chain, uh, but never been to Houston. This is our Houston debut. Pretty excited about that. Very yeah. excited about this. You got, what, Frank Miller doing a polish on the screenplay? I love you that. Got the director of Empire Strikes Back. Oh, my yep. God. The yep. villain is under 12 years old. Love that. I love that. <laughs> right? It's great. It's fucking great. Uh, and 209, of course. Uh-huh. Uh, he's still he comes back. Man. He comes back, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, probably. You can't <laughs> or it's keep like him Robocop away. 2 is the other thing. What's the big the mechanical King. nemesis? It's uh, Tom Noonan as oh, uh, that's King. Hot. Now I'm he mixing gets up his movies. Yes. Brain put into a monster that's of robot a... parts. Right. That's that's what I'm thinking of. Uh and then the very next night, uh, we're going back to Austin. First time in six years we've been back there. A WLM all about from dusk till dawn at Cap City comedy club uh also have not been there um pretty excited about that very excited to get back yeah. to austin texas it has been too long and we miss you yes. come out that's yeah. right come on, come on to all come of these shows all we're three going. are going to be fantastic um in atlanta we haven't been there in the better part of a decade oh. seven years um so that's going to be great head over to our website whmpodcast.com click on that tour tab all ticketing information is there uh, and someone was asking something about meet and greets. Uh, yes, we're doing meet and greets. They are the highest ticket tier. Whatever, Whatever that is, that gets yeah, the, is, yeah. the meet and greet. Um, all right. So I know um, just me and Chris Cabin. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think saw this guy. Did did any of uh, either of you see it? No, no, I drove there. away from it. Uh, oh, yeah. yes. look what you did there! Yes, look, look what I did. You did there. Uh, uh, yeah, Chris Cabin, I'll let you go first here, man. And your your thoughts on this movie? I think I, you liked it a little better than I did. I, I probably i I like the vibes. I like that this movie feels it, it feels like it's calling from very specific kinds of movies. I thought about uh, like 
the more sex positive uh, sexploitation movies mm -hmm. uh, of the 70s and early 80s. Also, like early Jonathan Demme com comedies. Uh, that that is a very particular flavor that I don't see often, mm -hmm. uh, and that energized me. I wanted to watch it. I was never bored with it. The mm -hmm. story is terrible. It's awful. Uh, it, it's it is awful. so bad. Uh, but <laughs> also, and I, I actually wouldn't have mind. Like I'm used to zany plots in like certain uh, Coen Brothers movies, so it wasn't like completely out of left field. Uh -huh. But a bigger issue, I think, I like her usually. Margaret Qualley, her the whole the the tick, the way she talks is everything about the character. It's annoying. There is nope. like you, you don't really get any sense of what what she believes otherwise or who mm. she is otherwise. It's just mm -hmm. this tick and like having this like way about her where she's talking about all the people she's fucked all the time and like how she like has this rambling world view uh, of of life and like but none of it like feels real it just feels like mm -hmm. she's saying stuff to have that as a weird affect mm -hmm. uh i i like the rest of the cast uh bill camp has a funny like two scene <laughs> uh bill bit, camp's uh, great who you saw you probably saw most of it in the trailer um mm -hmm. but yeah I, I as a movie it doesn't really work like it, yeah. it, it, I, it didn't come together for, it's not very satisfying in any mm -hmm. way but i do the the flavor of it did at least make me happy that something like this exists i guess sure yeah i mean i'm happy that it exists i'm happy that it, it it got a theatrical release i just don't think it works at all i think quali they were like hey go watch raising arizona and hi the nicholas cage character that's mm. you just do mm. that and that's really the vibe and i found it kind of distracting at times um i think you know <sighs> The supporting cast is better than the main cast, and for a movie, that's a problem, especially mm -hmm. when it's like the two of them on screen for most of it, and then all these other like disparate supporting characters that you're like, I kind of just wish, you know, like, like the, I wish they interacted with Coleman Domingo more. Coleman Domingo is fucking wasted in this yeah. movie, like, he's kind of the villain, but not really. And then when you realize like what the whole full story is. It's just a real shoulder shrug of a joke. I did not laugh at all about what was in that briefcase. Like all no. of that stuff, it just does not fucking work. And let me tell you the thing that shoots this movie in the foot. All of these like really bad, um, like kind of psychedelic animated transitional sequences that go for like, some of them felt like one to two minutes at a time before you get to the next scene and like all told it's 84 minutes mm -hmm. and every time one of those things comes up on screen you can feel the movie pulling itself across the feature length finish line you're just sitting there like there's no movie here there's so wow. little movie in the movie it just was driving me fucking crazy. The trailers um, reminded me of like in the nineties with the with the all the offshoots, the knockoffs of Tarantino yeah, and stuff. Yeah. It just looked out of time. Not yeah. it's not as like snappy and death obsessed as those are. It's more it's the sex stuff is more of what it's about. Uh right. it, it's very much trying to get that like I'm trying to think of a good like the the only one I can really think of is like the president's analysis analyst. It like these like hippie movies like mm -hmm. where, where like like oh man you got like free love and it actually matters man like stuff yeah. like that okay. like that is the tone they're kind of going for mixed with like early demi like I, it, it's kind of inexplicable but i like I, i'd be interested to see what they do next mm -hmm. uh, uh ethan cohen and uh his partner uh who wrote it with him uh yeah. i'm forgetting her name right now uh but uh I, I, I the actual story just didn't work for me. Like, mm. and I'm usually one who is like, uh, I don't care about story if everything else works. This one specifically didn't work for me. Yeah, I might see it this week. This week at some point, just to sort of keep on top of stuff. And I, because I, I was interested enough in the trailer, uh, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's sort of watching it kind of confirmed my worst fear from the trailer, which is to me at least, it plays like, and you know, I guess this is pretty ironic but like it plays like a movie from the 90s where not tarantino but someone was like ripping the coen brothers off yeah it feels like a knockoff coen brothers movie yes 
and that super sucks. Um, you know, it's not really distinguished. Like it has all like the, the Cohen comedy and like the morbid relationship of like comedy to violence, which is great, but you can see where like my man needs his brother mm -hmm. and they need to just, you know, you leave them on their own. One gets too serious and one gets too goofy. Yeah. You put them together. Now that's the movie. I love that uh, Macbeth. I love it's, it. It's fucking yeah, great, it's but yeah. it's just like, good. it was so like, yeah, was you stark. made this. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, that's what this feels like, but in the complete other direction. Um, yeah. I don't know. Will no one save Curly is the line of the movie. Bill Camp has the line of the movie. Um, yeah. And there's some cameos that are just like, I saw some people like, yeah, I loved it because of those cameos. Absolutely not. Mm. Just a waste of it's fine. A waste like, of everyone's time. I, I, Steve, I honestly, I would say you'll be fucking renting it soon enough, man. I don't need, need to race out to the theater. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just me. I, you know, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, but yeah, you know, I guess light recommend overall for me because I can see people liking it. It just it did not yeah. work for me uh, overall uh what's going on in the chat a couple of people saying they sort of were digging it a lot of people still wanting to see it you know that's you know i wish I, it said that it the out. uh the co-writer is uh trisha cook uh yes trisha cook you. uh thank yeah his you. Uh, partner and um i mean that's i guess another thing too like if you wrote a script 30 years ago maybe kind of like punch yeah, it up a scotch scotch yeah exactly it did feel a little like all right Maybe you know. more than 80 pages. Was, yeah, there yeah. A, was there a newer draft here somewhere? Look, yeah. I, look, I the one thing I am not going to knock this movie for is being short. Like, no. I, 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 please. I, I, that is the one thing. Please. More 80 minute movies. Pile them in. I, I, I mean, I would. make an 80 minute movie, sure, but like, don't pad that shit with really bad transitions. That it's like, didn't you think it was so obvious, Chris? Like, those things just keep going, and you're like, what is any of this for other than to kill time i mean it's uh, to me like because it, it it does add to like the we're doing drugs and having sex all the time right everybody like there's this vibe to it that it matches but no least. one's doing drugs in the movie there's no well, psychedelia in the movie i mean they're all i mean the one guy's high in the well i don't want to ruin it but the one guy is very high in the flashback uh oh. So the one thing for the dude that's in the movie for but 67 that's, seconds. That's what the transition's about. The character, well, like, I'm trying to not talk about the I one know. cameo. I know. Fellas, like, it sounds far that. out. It sounds like a far <laughs> yes. out. Yes, that is the uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Um, so, yeah, see see at your own will, Steve. Uh, okay. Your, we'll find out. Risk. Um, uh, but Brandon's here. Uh, we're going to oh. bring uh, Brandon Streisling in. Uh his camera's not on though, so we'll have to see about that. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Look at him. He's being coy. All right, Brandon, welcome to OSL, man. How's it going? Good. How are you guys? Good. Yeah, thanks Good, for man. being here, man. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet long you. time coming, yeah, nice teaming up you with you, man. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Brandon, so, by the way, yeah. I think your Twitter account is what got me to watch all those Scott Atkins movies. So thank you. <laughs> you too. I, yeah. Either you're welcome or I'm sorry because there's like <laughs> there's like a very high ceiling and then the drop off. Right. Like well, it's pretty... mostly positive. Yeah. yeah. He he's never the 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 thing that's wrong with the movie he's in, but he's in a lot of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's really the reason. Like I, I recently watched because I, I think it was your recommendation too, Brandon was a uh, one shot. Oh yeah, um, which is just wonderful. I, I really those are a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Just, I, I just I every time he's American in a movie, I'm just like, just let him be British. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the the accent's not really working here. No, right. Really. Yeah, <laughs> unless it's like super important to the character or whatever. Is that a, a franchise where the sequel's better than the first one? I've heard, I've heard some people saying that. I, I like the first one more. I think the first one's better. Yeah, the sequel tries to go bigger. The, the problem with the sequel, and like not to get too much into it, is the actress playing the villain is like one of the worst actors I've ever seen, <laughs> and she's all over the movie. But yeah, Andrew, you might yeah. be thinking about. I was always saying Ninja Two is better than Ninja. You know 1. what? Uh, mm. Yeah, there you go. As soon as you said it, I was like, wait a second. Yes. Um. So Brandon, March fourth, uh, so a week from today, uh, the second annual Vulture Stunt Awards uh, are being revealed. The winners are being revealed. Um, tell us a little bit about how uh, this fucking great effort, I will say, uh, came to be, my friend. Uh, it, so I guess two years ago now, at the end of 2022, uh, Bilga Abiri, who's like one of my uh, 
friends, he mm-hmm. he had messaged me on Twitter out of nowhere and was like, hey, Vulture wants to do this thing. Are you interested in uh, basically running it? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like it kind of blew me away because I was like, yeah, I mean, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I, I thought it mm-hmm. sounded exciting and didn't realize it was going to be like six months of me sending emails to people <laughs> and having, <laughs> having those people respond to me like, who are you? Why are you talking to me? <laughs> like, um, but uh, but yeah, they were just, uh, I think there's been like a push over the last however many years for a stunt Oscar. It hasn't really been yeah. going anywhere. And so Vulture was like, let's just do something of our own. And so the first year, Bilga and I kind of ran it together and it was like this small scrappy thing. We, we got a few filmmakers on board to be part of like the voting body. Like mm. I, I, I think you probably know this best Andrew, cause you took part in the nomination process this year, but um, mm-hmm. basically we reach out to just people all over the industry, whether, whether it's like critics, uh, filmmakers, stunt people, some people are who we, we try to get the most um, and just tell them what we're doing. And there's like a first wave of nominating a second wave of voting. And, Last year we had about, <clears throat> excuse me, last year we had about 90 something people. This year it's like close to 250. So it's really Whoa, cool that nice. it's like blown up so much. But nice. yeah, it's it's been kind of fun to see it grow. Brandon, on that, uh, when you're emailing stunned people, higher than average at AOL addresses on there? <laughs> <you think? laughs> there's, there's at AOL a, a ton of hot mail. Uh, yeah, I would think. Yeah, I would oh, think. Sure. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I, My I granddaughter one... set it up. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> there, there is one guy who's very old, and he, I, he, he was supposed to take part in a bunch of our like meetings last year on how to set this all up. And every single time, I'd get an email from him like an hour later, like, "Hey, I'm in, I'm in the uh, room. Can someone let me in?" And it's like, buddy, that was like two hours. Ago. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> every single time. <laughs> incredible no. uh yeah. so this is this is year two uh of the awards so yeah, very well received last year um i remember you know just reading so many people just like this is great we need this kind of stuff i mean because let's face it the oscars they were just like oh two years from now we're gonna give out a casting oscar and i was I like believe that shit what the <laughs> fuck takes so long what are you talking about just yeah. make the category make the stunt category even if you want to give it out the technical awards and don't have these leather faces up on the uh <laughs> podium that's fine too i would rather them be part of the ceremony of yeah, course but you've got to sure. recognize this that falling through a chair and stuff like that, that is art that yeah. is an achievement give it an absolutely. award absolutely so, you know, yeah. one of the Got things it. I ran, ran into last year, and I'm not going to name the filmmaker because I don't want to out him, but I, am I, I, I am I allowed to swear on here? Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. Don't fucking worry about a thing. So he, he's a filmmaker I like. He he. All I'll say is he he did a uh, he he did a, a sequel to a, a beloved Spielberg franchise recently, mm. and. Uh, we reached out to him a few years ago to be part of this and his response kind of illuminated something for me that I think might be why there might not be a stunt Oscar is he said, I don't want to take part in this because I think it'll cause stunt people to go bigger and bigger and to try to get an award and hurt oh. themselves. And mm-hmm. it kind of pissed me off. Cause I felt like that was a little demeaning. It's like, it's like you work with these people, you know, they're not idiots. Like, they're still <laughs> professionals. Yeah. You can yeah. still direct them. Safety first every time. And and so I don't know. It was, I, I I relayed that to a few stunt people just to ask them if they thought that was the idea. And none of them were happy about that. Didn't tell them who it was, obviously, because I don't want them to, you know, lose yeah. any work. I'm but. not working with that fucker. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be in the movie. You know what I mean? Like if you're doing yeah. like, a fight scenes, like what if I lit myself on fire? Well, that's not in the movie, Frank. So we're not going to do that today. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What, what I want to see him get lit on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, something else that you pointed out though, that I think is kind of interesting. And that's where, you know, these stunt awards come in is like, what is it, what would it mean for the Oscars to just, you know, give out best stunt, you know? And that's what I think is great about what you guys have here. There's so many categories built into the stunt world, you know, best stunt in action film, a non-action film, best fight, you know, best things with guns, best without, um, so like talk a little bit about creating, like, what was the, the overall amount of like categories you were thinking about throwing out and like, did you have to whittle that down a lot or how did that work? I think the idea just came from the fact that there's such a diversity of stunt work. And so it, it is hard to just pin down, you know, like, like if, if you were to go best stunt, for example, like 
if there if there was a Sun Oscar this year at the Oscars, I feel like John Wick Four could take up like four out of the five slots or however many nominations yep. there would be. Right. So you kind of want to spread the wealth a little bit, and and I, and so we we kind of tried to narrow it down to like uh, like best fight. We we had to make clear that it had to be with a weapon, but not a gun, because there's shootout and everything like that. Um, right. But so so that was like kind of tough whittling down because it's like well what constitutes like because you know like John Wick has a lot of like fighting and then guns are involved it's like gun kata basically so it's right. like yeah those parameters were kind of tough to nail down but I think my favorite category of the last few years has been best done in a non action film because the nominees are so bizarre sometimes like yep. this yes. this year it's like no hard feelings and Bo is afraid and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's awesome man the 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 final like football field scene from Bottoms which is great probably the best part of that movie yeah um i, I mean like shit you wouldn't think about like iron claw but yeah of course yeah, like of course, the yeah. wrestling montages in that yeah can i can i uh recommend uh, a category if, it's, if it doesn't exist yet most surprising use of a stunt double because sometimes you'll see like <laughs> somebody getting out of a car and you're like why the fuck is that the stunt double and then you cut back and he's like like if the guy wasn't available that day or he was just too chicken shit to literally get out of an suv like that <laughs> I'm gonna note that down because that's Please great. Do. I mean, it's dangerous getting out of a car. You could trip. You know, like if you don't take the belt off the right way, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Bro, I could step wrong at the SUV and break my fucking ankle. No way. Can I step out of a car? Yes, I can. But if I do, <laughs> delay the production. I fall, delays the production. That's my whole career there. Trevor's gonna get my Papa John's. I hope that you know now that he's staying prayed up all the time that he'd be that he's you know maybe a little more bold that he has God on his side. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. I can jump off this building. I got Jesus holding me. <laughs> yeah, I think he gives, but he just gives blessings to all his bodyguards and stuntmen that yes. follow him around everywhere, <laughs> do everything he needs to do. I bet you, you know what, Chris Cavan? That reminds me. I bet you anything. He's a dude who like he's not frocked at all, and he's fucking just doing this. To oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. throwing out the blessing, the blessing maneuver there when he should not be and has no business doing that. Absolutely. No, it's all right. My piss is technically holy water. Let me put a little on you. <laughs> That's what happens when you work with Mel Gibson. You just you're you're ushered in. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, what I love about it too, dude, you have stuff from like all over the world, which is really great. You know, it's not just it's not just Hollywood movies. Tons of stuff like I have not even heard of, which is very exciting because I'm sitting here like check this okay make mm. sure you see that etc who do you think right now like what whose film industry is doing the best most innovative stuff with stunts right now would you say i mean it's definitely easy to say anywhere in asia i mean like mm -hmm. especially you know the last 10 15 years like indonesia has been really killing it um i don't know how much this year but but last year france really is surprising me Oh, oh okay. I don't know if that came over my yeah. mic, but people. Oh, that's fine. Someone's doing other. a stunt out in your apartment. <laughs> <Yeah. right. laughs> um, but uh, France, the the last few years, uh, it's weird. Netflix has like a wide variety of really great action movies from all over the world that just people don't know about because Netflix doesn't talk about them. But France, like, there's these two um, French movies called Lost Bullet, and the sequel just has some unbelievable car stunts that look like oh, like really great, like. Fast and the Furious level stuff, but like I can't imagine it cost anything. Yeah. So right. yeah, like I, it, it's hard to pin down. Like I would say honestly, you know, I, I hate to be you know like go America, but the last few few years, I feel like we've gotten a lot better at that because uh -huh. I think we we were signed kind of like in a little bit of a rut with just like superhero movies being like the only action movies or movies trying to be superhero movies, and I think. Uh, John Wick and the Mission Impossible movies have really kind of helped that, and yeah, yeah it's it's Absolutely. been kind of nice to see a, us get a little better at action again. Was there that, stuff that you were watching where it was like, uh, oh, oh, that's cool, like yeah, this could be a, a stunt that's nominated, and then you look and it's like, oh, all of that was like, it turned out was bad computers. Like, that, was there anything where you were like, oh fuck, CGI? Well, that's a good question because like we we've had a lot of trouble, not trouble, we we had a lot of trouble with like figuring that stuff out so we brought in somebody um who does a lot of cg work in movies like to kind of help us figure that stuff out so for like the first uh -huh. year uh best 
uh, or explosive moment. I think that I, it's pretty sad. I don't know the name of names of my own categories, but uh, <laughs> explosive moment. Uh, Batman was one of the nominees when he's like walking away from the car and, and you know yep. it explodes and everything. Yeah, and yeah. I thought that I thought that was all digital. And I spoke to we we brought in our CGI guy. And he's like, no, most of that was real. Um, wow. I, yeah. So so it's it's been kind of fun figuring out like what isn't CG, what is, and everything. And and I think that there, there's kind of been like a melding of the two, which is interesting. Like mm. one I would have never thought about is like Way of Water two years ago had a ton of real stunt work because it's all being shot on a sound stage and they're still yeah. doing stunts, but I just never would have sure. thought of it because it's all computer. Uh, yeah. I, it's been interesting, especially since last year saw everybody go crazy about RRR that India, like this year I felt like I saw three major ones at least. I wasn't as big on Pathan as everybody was. Really? I, but I love uh, Jawan, I think is incredible. Jawan's uh, great. Yeah. I don't. Did you, were you able to sneak Rocky and R Ronnie into this somehow? No, I way? wanted, I wanted to because that was one of my favorite movies this year, but I, I think I was the only one in our nominating committee who saw it. What? <laughs> God, no, God, every, everybody go to Amazon right now and see uh, Rocky and Ronnie loves. It's got a uh, uh, Indian title, but it's Rocky and Ronnie's love story is what mm -hmm. it's called. It is incredible. And like the movement they get this guy to do in this movie is nuts and that wow to that point like i think that is a film uh, a filmmaking culture where i see digital and actual stunts really working hand in hand all the time like in constant flow uh mm -hmm. as shot to shot and just moving and i don't complain because it is so good together like i'm not a guy saying no cgi ever i'm saying use it when yeah. it's needed right like if you well. like an r an rrr where you're throwing tigers at people yeah you might <laughs> use a little cgi a little CGI. Or, but black well, widow when they're in a bar sitting next to each other there should be <laughs> no cgi in that job yeah. well, Chris, that's I'm, impossible I'm, steve how can you make a movie with uh, sitting at a bar without cgi i'm glad you brought up rrr chris because i'm i can't believe that slipped my mind because that that was actually an interesting thing is like that opening I, I thought most of that movie was CG and that opening intro to uh, Ram, Ram Sharan when he fights like 700 guys in the beginning of that movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought so much of that was CG, but they spent like, I, I think they spent like 100 days shooting that scene alone and that's oh, like all extra work wow. and everything. Oh, shit. Like, that rules. I think, I think that movie was like a 300 day shoot, which like is nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's that's incredible. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, I guess like the blending of it you know that's going to become just as important you know as stuff keeps getting you know more advanced with computers and everything like you know one of the things that's nominated for best vehicular stunt this year uh is probably the best part of fast x the rome car chase mm. and in that there yeah. is a bunch of like computer shit kind of flying around but it's also a really solid car chase so yeah i guess it's kind of like being able to parse out no they're still definitely doing stuff here like it's not like expendables where we all just rented the same like one <laughs> fake army utility vehicle and it's a bad green screen like this is real stuff that's just it's blended better um so, some people were voting for the expendables and i'm just like what are you oh, doing oh, wow. <laughs> oh, i cannot believe the snub of expendables for i'm, I'm surprised people saw that movie that's that's shocking <laughs> seriously <laughs> um so, you know, you got the lineup this year. Stuff's uh, being announced. The winners are being announced uh, next Monday. But what are you looking forward to this year? Like, what's some shit coming out that you're like, oh, that might be nominated Stunt Awards 3? Uh, like, what's coming down the pike that you're psyched about? It's funny. My my editor and I were had, like, a long discussion about this the other day over Zoom because we were trying to start talking early about next year, and we were going through all the movies. And there wasn't... At first, there wasn't anything jumping out at me too much the way like a John Wick or Mission Impossible would. But, you right. know, of course, there's Furiosa, which is really exciting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. And and Monkey Man looks like it's yes. going to be a lot of fun. That looked incredible. Yep. Um, I, I know. I, I think you guys were kind of mixed on the beekeeper, but I think there's a like really great fight at the end of that movie. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Yep. And that, that I, I mean, that that's probably going to slip my mind by the end of the year, but I've, I've, I, cause I've been trying to keep notes of every action movie I see this year just to remember because it's like hard. But yeah, Furiosa, Monkey Man. I just saw a trailer for one with Bill Skarsgård that looks kind of fun. I think it's called Boy Kills the World or Boy Versus the World or something. Yes. Yeah. I, it, it just came out. It just like uh, uh, this past like Friday, I feel like it, it yeah. came out. Yeah. 
yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. Um, mm. and, and we'll see about the TV movie Roadhouse as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, God damn, dude, you're just trying to get my blood boiling all over again, aren't you? <laughs> What a fucking like six, great. six Scott Adkins movies coming out that I'm sure <laughs> oh, some yeah. of them will be no. good. That seems like a light year for Scott Adkins. <laughs> yeah. uh... <laughs> he keeps there's, us well fed. I love that guy. There's one There's one I want to shout out just because it's like DTV All-Stars. Uh, that sounds exciting. It's him, um, Marco Zoror, uh, uh, Daniel Bernhardt. I don't know if any of you know him. Um, he, he did double work in a lot of the Matrix movies. He, okay. You would know his face if you saw him. Uh-huh. And... Uh, Dave Batista's in it. He's like the lead. And, uh, oh, nice! And I like that. Uh, WWE wrestler Drew McIntyre is also in it. So I'm I like very it. excited for that Ooh. one. I think it's called the uh, Killers Game or something. But that, okay. that sounds like it's going to be very fun. I'd like to watch uh, Batista just tear shit up a little bit. Yes. I, mean, if, I love yeah. to watch him act. Obviously, like I'm glad that he's more of an actor now, and obviously he's an older man. Yada yada yada. But. I kind of want to watch a dude tear some shit up. Right. Just like split someone in half and drink their blood. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I I don't know, Steve. Have you seen these trailers for Ricky Stanicki? I think John Cena might just tear it up a bit and have a have a hell of a time with the fights. What is this? What is this? I don't I don't know this one. You don't it's 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 a, a comedy where he plays an actor who has to play a fake friend yeah of a group of guys uh, and his name is Ricky Stanicki. It's uh, Peter Farrelly's okay. follow-up to Green Book. FYI. Yes, of course. Ah, yeah, the, the long-awaited. The quality yes. is back. That's what we yeah. were w- waiting for. <laughs> I, uh, Brent, do you know Highlander? It, the new Highlander is not happening this year. Not this year. No. Uh, I I think it is going. I think w- when I spoke to Chad, I interviewed Chad Snellsky last year for John Wick, and I think he was that was the movie he was out scouting when I talked to him. Um, oh, nice. But. Nothing had been confirmed at that point, but I think it has been confirmed. But it's probably, I don't think it's even started shooting yet. Yeah, but I think, two, three, I two. think Cavill is uh confirmed for that, which I, I like, I like Cavill well enough. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I was thinking I, about I, him. I, I think yeah. he's, I just think that he needs, he needs a hit. And I just, you know what I mean? I, I don't think those, those Superman movies did him any favors. No. Like he, he's doing the movie a favor by doing his best but they just the he's a good superman down. yeah right. puts but no, no, no guys we need him to tank his career so much that he's doing dtv action I, movies hey, hey, his look life. hey what do you think argyle was yeah, what they, exactly you go. Would honestly you call argyle mm-hmm, other than yeah. that a bombing of your own career <laughs> <laughs> a lot of uh a lot of stunts in argyle chris cabin your favorite movie this year so far there's like a couple action scenes but they're not like it's lots of cuts you're cutting everywhere so the yeah. actual choreography doesn't come through so right, I, I, right, right. I, it didn't stick with me if it if if there is stunts in there i didn't like hit me gotcha uh so we do have to start wrapping up but uh brandon so next monday three four the uh, winners are being announced. How are you guys doing that? Is it a written piece? Is there like a video uh, presentation or? It's it's a written piece. I think I don't want to <clears throat> I don't want to say like for sure, but I think there is going to be a little bit of a video component this year. But what I'm really excited about and it's kind of lame. Like I, I was hoping I could say more. I talked to my editor before coming on here, but she told me not to say too much. But <laughs> okay. it's expanding. It's expanding into like something pretty huge this year. Oh, cool. um, like okay. the awards are just going to be a small part of something bigger, which I'm really excited about. There's like, mm-hmm. there's a bunch of like running parts or whatever. I, I don't, it's all like okay. vague speak. It's kind of lame, but, uh, but yeah, there's <laughs> going to be like a huge just thing that we drop on the fourth, which I'm really excited about. That's awesome, and man. The, and yeah. uh, pe- people just be able to go to Vulture and, and find that on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, if, if you Google Vulture Stunt Awards, I think the top link is just like the hub where we keep everything from, okay. from the last year, this year, things like that. Nice. Nice. All right, man. Well, listen, best of luck with round two. Already looking forward to round three. Have us back on the selection committee. We will nominate some shit, no doubt. Um, Absolutely. But thanks yeah. for coming on, dude. Uh, where can people uh, find your work elsewhere before we let you go? Uh, I'm all over the place, uh, mostly with Vulture right now. But I, you know, I've written for Fangoria, Polygon, Inverse, a whole bunch of places. Uh, taking a long break after the fourth, though. So. That nice. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Makes total sense. You will have earned it, my friend. Uh, well, thanks so much for coming on, dude. Come back anytime. Honestly, we'll have you on on the on the podcast some time, ripping a shitty action movie or something. Oh, I'd love to. Thanks so much for having me. This is really fun. Awesome. Right on, dude. Yeah. Nice all right. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Take all care. Right. Have, have a good day, Brandon. Bye bye.
I'm fucking pumped for that, man. Yeah, Whatever man. that tease mm-hmm. was, that's going to be great. There's also ask, a Lifetime there Achievement statues? Award. Are there little statues? <laughs> Ooh, I didn't want to ask. Yeah. I didn't want to put them on the spot for the statues. little statues. They're little statues that fight each other. Right? <laughs> it's, a little, Small it's a little like guy in a wheelchair with his arm in a cast. <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh, but that's going to do it for this week, gang. Uh, a lot of stuff covered here. Um, but... A lot of stuff to come. Uh, if you're catching up from last week, by the way, we did drop the Melro 210. I love uh, that screenshot of Jane with the dress. She is oh, really mad yes. about it. It's yes. pretty great. I, this was some sort of Fox promotional photo, dude. It yes. was like very high res, which you normally do not get with the screen grab. It, was, it had to have been sweeps week. I, 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 I will bet my 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 next paycheck to the sweeps week. Oh, oh rat fight plus pool. Yeah, it's sweeps that, week. That's uh, some good action, folks. If you want to take them up on that, fight. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. Uh, no stunt doubles there. Those actresses were going in the water. Um, mm-hmm. But really cool tomorrow. Tomorrow, we hate movies presents leprechaun three really great we're welcoming uh back our friends james a janice and chelsea rebecca from dead meat here we are having a fucking ball recording that episode um but that's going to be out uh very excited about that it's finally a leprechaun movie that i enjoyed uh which is nuts <laughs> but uh you know i guess whatever third time's a charm add the sleaziness of vegas there you go mm-hmm. uh if you want that sucker Ad free and get so on the Patreon at the eight dollar level and up. Uh, where this week also uh, on Thursday, which is the last week we got, it's a leap year. Do you guys know it's a leap year? By the way, it's, it's no. a leap year. Twenty no ninth. Yeah, the shouldn't 29th there be a horror February. movie out right now called Leap Year? I know, uh, but instead the Nexus will be coming out on Leap Day. Uh, talking talking about two, I have to say, pretty good episodes of Star Trek. It yeah. was a nice convo. Very difficult for us to sort of figure out uh, which one was better. Uh, so very cool with that. Um, and some big news here oh. for Patreon subscribers and those who are about to subscribe to the Patreon. huge news and folks. Patreon Wake curious. Up. Mm-hmm. Wake up and, and the Patreon curious. That's right. Um, we're just going to tease it because we're going to tell you what it is next Monday here on on screen live. But we have a new top tier Patreon show that we're going to be announcing. And Philippe Sabrero, of course, uh, our artist in residence, our main man, the mad scientist of uh, promo logos, has a new thing out. We're very excited for this. Teasing it. We're going to blur it out here. I know I'm a real fucking jerk, but this is the logo. Next week on On Screen Live, we're going to tell you what that show is. We're very, very excited about that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, But until then, we hope you have a great week. Tune in next Monday, 12 noon. We're going to be telling you what the show is again. Super pumped for this, folks. Uh, but that's it. Have a great week. Uh, until next time, I've been Andrew Jupin, Steven Sadek, Eric Siska, Chris Cabin. Adios, folks. Bye bye.